Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare-certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. I love the nurses that come and see me. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Since I learned about Angel Care, I would recommend them to anybody. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always to the producer and editor of our series, Jeff Durall. Also thanks to Brandon Cooley, who is uh, camera two from Eagle Community Television today. We're at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History at Fort Hayes State University with the Curator of Paleontology at Sternberg and Assistant Professor of Geosciences at Fort Hayes State, Dr. Laura Wilson, as we talk about uh, some grants and some ideas coming at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. The Dane Hansen Foundation of Logan awarded Fort Hayes State University Sternberg Museum of Natural History a matching grant of $81,000 to renovate the museum's fossil preparation lab. That's where we are at the present time. The grant money will be released when the museum has raised $81,000 to match the Hansen Foundation grant. And another grant came the way of Sternberg by way of the National Science Foundation. We'll visit with our community connection, Dr. Laura Wilson. Let's start at the beginning if we could first <laughs> though, Professor. What does the study of paleontology involve? So the study of paleontology is the study of ancient life. So it is as encompassing as biology is for the study of current life. So um, it's everything from what an organism looked like, the bones, how muscles would have attached, reconstructions of the anatomy of the organism, to how it moved and lived its life, behavior, so is, is a wide range of study with as many tools to study as questions to ask. And it sounds like a lot more blanks to fill in than, say, the biologist might have being able to view current species. We, we have to make a few more assumptions, but one of the really interesting things about paleontology, it's this beautiful intersection between geology and biology, mm -hmm. and we pull information from both fields and integrate them to help answer our questions. And so I do a lot of geology, and I'm obviously in a geoscience department, but then my research, I do a lot of studying modern organisms. So I work with ancient birds, and I do a lot of studying modern birds to fill in some of the gaps that, that are a little hard when you're working with things that have been dead for 80 million years. So paleontology can encompass both lab work and field work as well, Dr. Very Wilson. much so. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole range of indoor-outdoor activities. And how about students? Can they choose whether they would prefer to do field work or lab work? Is that a possibility at graduation? Um, to some degree, yes. So there are jobs that involve just lab work. And I've had students go on to be lab managers, to um, be preparators, to so working in a, in a facility like this, cleaning mm -hmm. fossils, teaching other to clean fossils, manage labs. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a, a employment opportunities through museums for working in the collections. Mm -hmm. So where we store all of our research and educational um, specimens. And so working with those with organization and databasing and imaging and getting data available to the public. Uh, there are opportunities for field work and a variety of, of, of job options. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that a lot of students don't really realize coming in is that there's really no such job that is only field work. It's part of another job. So. What uh, interested uh, Dr. Wilson about paleontology? So my first love was actually sharks. And when I was in elementary school, I wanted to be a marine biologist and specialize uh -huh. in sharks. Sue the shark lady, I wanted to be her. Um, <laughs> and so I would read everything I could about sharks. And I started reading more and more about extinct sharks and was really intrigued by this idea of organisms that had lived that weren't here anymore and mm -hmm. how we knew that 
they once lived. Mm -hmm. And that kind of coincided in junior high, I took my first earth science class in seventh grade. And so it was just kind of this perfect storm of where I was in my own interests, then learning about deep time. And I kind of switched over from the biology to the paleontology of that aspect. You have an interesting story about how you uh, arrived at Fort Hayes State mm -hmm. uh, through a recruitment effort that occurred <laughs> quite a few years ago. Well, so, you know, with, with any job in paleontology, as many fields, they're very limited job opportunities. And of course, this is something we have to stress to our students. And it just happened that this job came open right as I was finishing my PhD at University of Colorado. And, you know, you read through job descriptions and, you know, you kind of figure out where you may have to, you know, emphasize one part of your resume or one part of your cover letter. And just every box that they were asking for, I was able to check off. My dissertation was looking at birds and the ecology of the Western Interior Seaway, which are the sediments that we're standing on right now. Mm -hmm. And so it was just really perfect. I had experience working with museums in collection management. I had research that fit in here. I wanted a, a smaller teaching focused institution versus a research one institution. Mm -hmm. And so stars really aligned and hard work paid off and I was, I was able to secure the position here. And you were probably obviously aware of Sternberg Museum and its history. Yeah, I had used um, specimens that were housed here mm -hmm. in my dissertation um, mm -hmm. before you know, I even knew that there would be a job here. And so had had driven through, had visited um, collections in KU and other places to look at specimens um, for, for my own research. Let's talk about these grants, okay. uh, the first of which from the National Science Foundation, uh, the $197,000 okay. mm -hmm. grant through the National Science Foundation. Um, how did that come about? So when I, when I got here and I started my job as the curator, I kind of made a laundry list of things that I wanted to see improved, that I wanted to, you know, maybe change or bring into the, the museum and the collections. And one of the big one was I wanted a relational database system. So something that we could put all of our specimen data into and everything that was in written files and card catalogs mm -hmm. um, and handwritten ledgers to transcribe that into a, a database that we could search, add images to, and put online. The, and, old, the old ways of keeping yes, track of the exhibits exactly. and what came in. Yeah, and so I, um, that was kind of my number one thing that I wanted. And mm -hmm. so I needed $20,000 roughly to get the database system that I wanted. Um, and that turned into writing an almost $200,000 <laughs> grant, um, but included things like digitization equipment, so cameras, 3D scanning, um, a huge chunk of that is student labor, so I'm funding one graduate student and two undergraduate students on that, um, and as well as uh, running a teacher workshop next summer with the uh, help of some of the professors on the university and the Kansas um, Academy of Science people, so, mm -hmm. wow. so yeah. That's going to be a mm -hmm. big attraction, I think, for teachers to really get hands-on yes. during the summertime. And, and the great part about this is that all of our collection data gets put online. And mm -hmm. so it's accessible, images are accessible, data are accessible. People can create you know, maps of where we find fossils and mm -hmm. images of what we find, where we find it. And so it can have a lot of research as well as educational resources out of that. Useful for students, for mm -hmm. research, for teachers. curiosity, mm -hmm. teachers. Yep and the general public exactly. that just has an interest mm -hmm. in yep. those types exactly. of materials. Wow. Exactly. And then came the Hansen Foundation grant, uh, $81,000 mm -hmm. that was uh, on a matching basis, right. even though the National Science Foundation grant was uh, steady without right. any matching necessary. You had to raise matching funds to meet this 81000 We did, yes. And there's good news. There is good news. <laughs> I confirmed with the uh, Fort Hayes Fort Foundation yesterday that we have reached our match. Um, we had 58 different donors step forward, including wow. a large chunk of it from uh, Mike and Pam Everhart, who uh, mm -hmm. Mike is actually an adjunct curator at mm -hmm. the Sternberg Museum. Um, to help us reach our goal. Mm -hmm. So anything that we can raise on top of this is, you know, icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's been a fantastic support from the community that we've had between mm -hmm. 
uh, emails and phone calls. We had our fundraising uh, gala at the beginning of last month. Um, and so it's just been great to be able to improve educational and resource and student resource and community resources that we have here at the museum. But as you said, Dr. Wilson, folks who would like to still contribute to this in whatever way they mm -hmm. would feel uh, possible uh, with the resources, would be able to do more in the paleontology area with student involvement, with uh, remodeling, with whatever is necessary then. Exactly. So especially one of the things that we cut out of the proposal that we sent to um, the Hansen Foundation is student funding. Mm. And so mm -hmm. any extra money we can put towards hiring undergraduate and graduate students to help set up the lab, to uh, train volunteers and other students who are interested to run community workshops and stuff like that. So that's kind of where we are now in terms of fundraising. And to support Sternberg Museum and the Fossil Prep Lab project, gifts can be made online at the foundation.fhsu.edu forward slash donate mm -hmm. forward slash and type in Fossil Prep Lab and they can make a contribution exactly. there. Mm -hmm. Now, the grants are going to be used in this particular area. This is kind of a small area here. Exactly. I think that's the whole point, <laughs> yes. isn't it, Dr. Wilson? It is. It's a very small area. We can fit maybe three students in here, and if they're doing loud and large things, then they have to find somewhere else to go. <laughs> um, we've had to make a makeshift area that's actually right across from us now where we can bring in big uh, jackets that we need to, big fossils that we need to clean. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have running water in here, so we have to bring in water essentially in buckets and then take it back out. And we also don't have ventilation. Uh -huh. So when we do things with fumes or a lot of dust, mm -hmm. that causes um, some, some concerns. And that's part of the renovation exactly. process that will take place. Exactly. So it's more than tripling our space, we can make it into a hands-on classroom mm -hmm. where we can do after-school programs, mm -hmm. community programs, workshops, and stuff like that. And when is the process scheduled to begin? Is there a completion date? Give us some detail there. We don't have those yet. So since we've just found out that we've reached our match, we're now mm -hmm. uh, setting up another appointment or another meeting with the university architect and, con and uh, contractors to get a final budget, to get mm -hmm. a timeline, and uh, figuring when we can get things underway. Uh, the director of Sternberg Museum, Dr. Reese Barrick, said that uh, as the director, I'm extremely proud of the dedicated effort Dr. Wilson has given to expanding the paleontology collections of the museum and expanding the accessibility of the collections to everyone interested in the natural history of our world. And I've got to think, Dr. Wilson, that young people, students, classes that come to Sternberg, are going to be really involved and interested in the work that's being done here. We, we really hope so. I mean, paleontology is a fascination, you know. It's, it's one of those, it's called kind of the, the gateway to science in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Kids love dinosaurs. Kids love the big extinct organisms. And we have a lot of those resources here in Kansas that we're able to showcase to the public. And so to get people interested in science at a young age, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of that does come through the, the paleontology side of things um, with T-Rexes and Mosasaurs and all of that. And so to be able to have that to share with the public, um, to design educational activities, to design exhibits around um, is really fantastic. And one of the, the plans with the new prep lab is to actually open it up into exhibit space even more so it becomes even more integrated with the public coming in to be mm -hmm. able to keep more people working in it um, and trained to work in it so it becomes more exhibit. And in our final couple of minutes, Dr. Wilson, talk about the paleontology collection here okay. at Sternberg. So the paleontology collection here, you know, I think it's really special, especially, you know, compared to the big collections back east and things like that, is that we are very focused on what we have locally. So most mm -hmm. of the things within our collection come within a couple county radius of where mm -hmm. we are right now. So we're very focused on the fossils from Kansas. Mm -hmm. So we have, a, we're best known for our late Cretaceous marine fossils. So when Kansas mm -hmm. was covered by an ocean 85 million years ago. Mm -hmm. So we have our mosasaurs and our pterosaurs and our big sharks and our big fish. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have some uh, about 8 million year old grassland fossils. So 
when grasses were first starting to spread across the Great Plains, and mm -hmm. we had rhinoceros and horses and camels. Um, so we have a, a large portion of those. Um, and then the other interesting thing about collections is that they, they can come locally, and then they also can get focused on what the curators at the time or in the past have researched. And so my research is Western Interior Seaway, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm adding to the, the marine biota that we have represented. My predecessor, um, Dr. Zakchevsky, studied uh, more recent rodents, and so we actually have a very large rodent collection that's associated with his research. There may be more sharks to come. Though. There may be, there may be. <laughs> We hope. <laughs> and with the remodeling project, big things are coming to the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. Assistant Professor of Geosciences at Fort Hayes State and Curator of the Paleontology Collection at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History, Dr. Laura Wilson, our Community Connection. Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare-certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. My Angel Care physical therapist taught me how to do exercises safely. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. It gives us independence in our home. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients.